drainage of the heart the important vein the major vein of the heart is the coronary sinus this is draining 60% of the blood from the heart it extends from the left end of the posterior part of the coronary sulcus up to a little away from the crux of the heart where it terminates ultimately by opening into the right atrial chamber this is the coronary sulcus you can see the opening of the coronary sinus this is opening of the coronary sinus inside the right atrium this is the right atrium this is the left atrium right atrium i have opened its posterior wall so that you are seeing the interior of the right atrium this is the ivc orifice this is the tricuspid orifice between the right atrium and right ventricle so between the ivc orifice and tricuspid orifice you can see the opening of the coronary sinus guarded by a valve called tabasian valve this is ivc orifice guarded by another valve called eustachian valve this is tricuspid orifice guarded by tricuspid valve in between these two is a coronary sinus orifice guarded by tabasian valve now for the tributaries of coronary sinus before its termination into the right atrium it receives a small cardiac vein accompanying the right coronary artery running in the posterior part of the right side of the coronary sulcus posterior interventricular vein artery accompanied by middle cardiac vein so after receiving the middle cardiac vein accompanying the posterior interventricular artery and small cardiac vein accompanying the right coronary arteries posterior or second segment it opens into the right atrium towards its left end it will be receiving the great cardiac vein the great cardiac vein will accompany the anterior interventricular artery winds around the left border of the heart and ultimately ends in the left end of the coronary sinus this part of the coronary sinus that is placed between the left ventricle and left atrium will also receive its veins from the left ventricle and the oblique vein of left atrium so its left end receives great cardiac vein its left segment between the left ventricle and left atrium will receive the veins from the left ventricle and the oblique vein of left atrium after crossing the crux of the heart before it terminates into right atrium it receives middle cardiac vein accompanying the posterior interventricular artery and small cardiac vein accompanying the right coronary artery second segment after receiving these two it ultimately opens into the right atrium between the ivc orifice and tricuspid orifice this is the orifice of coronary sinus guarded by tabasian valve the small cardiac vein accompanying the right coronary artery great cardiac vein accompanying the anterior interventricular artery and middle cardiac vein accompanying the posterior interventricular artery which are draining into the right atrium through the coronary sinus there are two veins which will bypass the coronary sinus and open directly into the right atrium these are called as anterior cardiac veins which will start from the right ventricle crosses the coronary sulcus and opens directly into the anterior wall of the right atrium besides there are small numerous veins called venae cordis minimae or tabasian veins which will also open into the right atrium draining the myocardium of the heart these are seen more on the right side than on the left side so 40% of the blood will be drained by the sebaceous vein and anterior cardiac vein directly into the right atrium remaining 60% of the venous blood of the heart will be drained by great cardiac small cardiac and middle cardiac vein through coronary sinus into the right atrium remember coronary arteries are the largest vasa vasorum of the body supplying heart which is the biggest blood vessel containing the blood inside and coronary arteries are the only blood vessels which are filled during diastole of the heart usually all the blood vessels in the body will be filled during systole of the heart because of the heart contracts when the ventricles contract then only they will push the blood into the outflow tracts that is the pulmonary trunk and the aorta so that all the blood vessels will get filled but coronary arteries will get filled only during relaxation of the heart so that the aorta blood can flow into these blood vessels and supply the heart and another important feature is coronary dominance coronary dominance is based on the posterior interventricular artery if posterior interventricular artery is given by right coronary artery it is called as right coronary dominance if it is given by left coronary artery it is called as left coronary dominance 
it if it is given by both these blood vessels it is called as balanced hemoglobin these are all mcq questions so please remember them